This week we're in South Texas for one of our favorite hunts of the year. We're working with Bill Carlson with Support U.S. Armed Forces and we'll be hosting a group of Purple Heart recipients here at Mellon Creek Outfitters for the next few days. He went right down, golly. Good job, man. This hunt, this is the most rewarding hunt we ever do. And these guys, they deserve every bit of it. We're gonna have a deer in about 45 minutes. He uh, turned and he gave me that good broadside shot. I sighted him in pretty quickly, made sure that I had a clean shot on him. Time to get up, time to get up now. Our lives move pretty fast, but it's only in the moment of the hunt that life slows down. It's not a matter of what we do, but how we do it. With passion, drive, and the challenge is to accept nothing but our best. We are the wildlifers. Every year we do a hunt with Support U.S. Armed Forces and one of its spokesmen, uh, Bill Carlson, to try and give back to the wounded veterans of the Armed Forces. These guys are all around us. Um, you see them getting their mail in the afternoon at the mailbox. You see them at the red light on your way to work. You see them at the grocery store. Uh, the guy that's coaching your kids. We've really met some incredible people and their stories are absolutely amazing. And it, it was one of the hunts that I think all of us look the most forward to out of all of the hunting that we do all year long. Every year that I guide this hunt, this is one that I look forward to. I really feel like every American should do something for their military and the people that have sacrificed being away from their family. Uh, Bill Carlson is all in when it comes to giving back to the armed forces. I mean, you can see that in his face. You can hear it in the emotion in his voice when he starts talking about it. For part members that are nominated for the hunt, they're gonna tell you there's somebody else more qualified. They were just doing their job. Hats off to Bill Carlson for all that he does for these guys. I got Ben Alicia, Blake Markwell, and Cleve McClary. Guys, we're gonna have a great time on some wonderful whitetail hunts. I well, we got some special guys out this year. Uh, ben Alicia, he encountered three insurgents that decided to launch a grenade at him. Uh, of course, we had a, a gentleman from last year, Cleve McClary. Patrick Cleburne McClary. They call me Cleve. Bullseye. Blake Markwell, Lance Corporal from the Marine Corps. He's in Afghanistan. They're out on a detachment and comes upon a, a, a creek. Looks a little too good to be true. Well, now that we got to meet these guys, I know we're gonna be in for a at least two or three days of really good hunting. You know, these guys that got in camp, you know, we went to the shooting range, everybody's shooting great. Hey, we've got a little bit of time. Let's go out there and, and squeeze in a nice evening hunt, see what we can find. I scouted a buck previously in the season before these guys got here, and we went back in there. This buck had crossed on a trail camera three or four times in the same area, and I'd put a pop-up blind there on a pipeline. And we sat there and we didn't see a deer all afternoon. We'd been there for a good while. I've been seeing this buck on camera. He comes through here about this time every afternoon. And I'm hoping that he shows up here pretty quick. And now it's just a waiting game until he shows up. Go out there, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. It's getting real dark, no buck. So Dan's a little frustrated. And as soon as we start packing up, like last second of light, last second of light, a hog comes out of the tree line. This big old black boar hog walks out and he's not but like 40 yards in front of the blind and he's rooting around there in the pipeline and I just can't take it anymore. And I finally told Blake to go ahead and cut him. You ain't gotta ask me twice. 
I'm going to shoot the hog. All right. Good job, man. <laughs> I was a little nervous to take the shot because I didn't want to just tick him off. That's the guy that's been sitting there and eating all my dang corn. Oh, well, good. I did you a favor. Indeed, you did a world of favor. You know, every time that your kidney flies out your left ear on them bumps on this road, this is why right here. So yeah, you did the world a favor. I'm glad that Blake got him. He made a great shot on him, and it was cool to be that close to him and watching him out of the blind. It was just a really cool hunt. So hopefully that's a sign that we've got good luck coming our way over the next few days. Had a blast. Cool, man. It's the first full day of this Purple Heart veteran hunt. And first up is Marine Sniper Ben Alasia. So I wanted to be uh, originally a fighter pilot in the Navy. Talked to a recruiter and they're like, hey, you know, you definitely have the grades, but uh, you're kind of short. At the time I was about five foot four. So once he told me that there was no way I was going to be a fighter pilot, I'm going to the Marine Corps and I want to be a sniper. You know, hey, there ain't gonna be no problem shooting here. When you're a sniper, you can definitely put the X on the target. He encountered three insurgents that decided to launch a grenade at him. I didn't feel it until one of my Marines touched me on the shoulder. And then he said, hey, you're bleeding. And I had shrapnel on my shoulder, in my thigh, in my elbow. I survived. We're going to have a deer in about 45 minutes. Hagen said uh, we're definitely going to get a deer, so uh, let's see if he uh, makes it happen. <laughs> Meeting Ben, I mean, I was looking forward to hunting with him. He's a funny guy. I know we're going to have a good time. I've got a deer that I feel like is pretty well patterned. I've been seeing on the same spot for about two weeks in the morning, so I'm pretty confident that it's going to work. We're going to hunt a pasture that I've been hunting this year, and I've really, really liked them. One of my favorite pastures probably on the ranch is called the park. Low brush country, your typical South Texas brush, so it should be great. Shortly after we arrived, a uh, six-point buck showed up, probably 50 yards from the blind. So uh, it, it kind of got us excited early because we didn't want to make any noise and uh, scare him off, which would probably scare off the rest of the deer in the area. That older buck's kind of hanging out with them. It's early in the year. They're still kind of in their bachelor groups. They haven't broke up yet. But uh, when I saw that deer come out, I knew his buddy was right behind him. Hagen's assumption was spot on because the shooter he'd been saving for Ben walked into the clearing. He looked like a linebacker coming down the uh, pipeline. So uh, Hagen told me, hey, that's the buck we're here to, to take. And now I'm, it, that buck fever ramped up again because at that point I had calmed down enough that I knew I could take a good shot. And now he tells me, hey, that's the deer you're going to shoot. He was only offering that, that front shot, and I couldn't take that shot at, the, at that point. Give me a better angle, buddy. So, you know, the nerves are starting to get rising up again. I'd already been on him for a while because I knew at any moment he could turn to look at a doe or something like that and would offer me that shot. All right, there we go. Once he uh, gave me that good angle, I told him, hey, uh, I'm getting ready to take this shot. So uh, Hagen told me, hey, that's the buck we're here to, to take. And he uh, turned and he gave me that good broadside shot that I wanted. I knew I'd hit the deer. Uh, Hagen told me, he's like, hey, I heard that thing wallop. I don't think he went far, man. It looked like he smoked him. He hadn't gone 40 yards. He was piled up right there. It's pretty easy to find him, which is always great. He worked out for the best. Awesome buck, man. Congratulations. A little 6'5 Grendel. Yes, sir. Short work of him, what, what do you think? 50, 55 yards. Yeah, nice. if he made it that far. 
Big old body, man. Congratulations. Good shot, bud. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot, buddy. Well, one of the warriors that came down this year was just an amazing man. They call me Klebe from Pauley's Island, South Carolina. I was a high school football coach and had a chance to be a graduate assistant at the University of South Carolina with Paul Dietzel. I just decided I was going to serve, so I walked off and they sent me to the officer's program at Quantico because I'd finished college and was coaching, and from there to Vietnam. You know, when I met Klebe, I mean, he's missing his left arm and he's missing his left eye. You know, it, it's hard to imagine somebody that has been through that much and to have the attitude that he had. You know, once we're hunting together, getting to meet Klebe, Man, he has an amazing story to tell. A young Marine, African-American, Ralph Johnson, only South Carolina in the head from Charleston. Ralph jumped on a grenade, smothered with his stomach, blew himself in half. It saved my life and life of two Marines with him. Well, let's go kill us a deer. Let's get him, let's get him. And I tried to get over to him as I crawl that way, another grenade came in as I did it, threw my hands up. This arm was off, my right hand covered my right eye, and it exploded. Blew my left eye out, nose off, teeth on the left side out, both eardrums out. Lost most of the use of my right hand. Things are looking pretty tough. I don't know how long it passed, but believe me, y'all, I know what it lives for being all my life. You know, where we're going to be hunting is, is a place that I've been scouting, you know, all year. I've, I've hunted it for years past, and we're going to actually be hunting an older buck that I've, I've been watching for a few years and I think he's perfect for Cleve. And we got a lot of deer in front of us. We just need the right one to come on. I got a feeling. It's a little, it's starting to cool off. These big old mature bucks, they're, they're moving at night, but this one, he's gonna wanna come step out here before it gets dark. You know, it's starting to get late. The deer's starting to move. We're about out of shooting light. And what do you know, I look up in the right buck. He's right in front of us. Hey, that's our buck. That's the buck we're gonna take. Go ahead and get on him. That's the one we want. Are you pretty steady? Yeah. Everything feel good? When he gives us a broadside shot, I want you to put it right behind his shoulder. Take your time. Whenever you feel comfortable, take your time and put it right behind his shoulder. Get him? Yes, sir. All right, man, how about it? He went right down, golly. Hey, he is down. Oh, man. It dropped so fast, I wasn't sure if he was running off or not. And I had asked Dustin, I said, did, he get, did he get him? He said, man, you got him, I guarantee you, he's dead. And he go up there and couldn't even find a hole in him, man. He wasn't even bleeding. I said, oh, gosh, I must, he must have had a heart attack. I scared him to death. What do you think? Man, that's beautiful. That is something else. Gosh, you know, I go, I'll hold him for you if you want. I tell you what, this deer, I've been watching him for a few years. And, and you know, this is a trophy buck to most people. Hey, you better believe bigger than I have a kill. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got him. I mean, the gratitude in this man's eyes. He told me this was the biggest buck that he had ever taken. And, you know, I, I could not think of a better man to get to harvest this buck and be as thankful as he was. I, that's, the, that's what it's about. An incredible guy and one that I truly enjoyed being around. I got so much to be thankful for. And uh, they took the tendons out of my foot, put my right hand. I got only one finger that bends all the way and that's my trigger finger, man. I'm blessed, I guarantee you. That's the main, that's the main thing I wanted to get going. It's been a wild couple of days here at the Mellon Creek Ranch, and two of the Purple Heart recipients have landed great Texas bucks. Last up on the list is Lance Corporal Blake Markwell. After taking down a hog on the very first night, Blake is dead set on getting a buck of his own before the hunt comes to a close. You know, this is one of the most important hunts that I do every year because I am as pro-military and as patriotic as one can possibly be. And out of all the clients I take hunting all year long, this is the most important of them all. And I have got to get Blake a deer this afternoon because he's leaving in the morning and I will be damned if he's gonna leave without a deer. 
I wanted to serve, so I joined the Marine Corps as soon as I finished the, uh, my finals. And I left for boot camp the day that my brother got home from Iraq. He's in Afghanistan, and of course they're out on a detachment and comes upon a, a, a creek and it looks like a pretty good crossing. Remotely detonated IED went off and uh, Blake took the impact to the side of his face. I was six feet away from the IED when it blew. It ended up breaking both eye sockets, both cheekbones, my nose in five places, four vertebrae in my neck and three in my lumbar spine. Suffice it to say he's very, very fortunate to, to be with us today. I'm very, very, very lucky. I have this spot down on the ranch where there's four bucks. One of them is absolutely not something we can shoot, but my plan is that any of the other three are okay to take. We're gonna set up in a blind and I'm gonna put the camera and Blake inside the blind and I'm gonna sit on the ground outside the window with my spotting scope. And when the deer start to come out, I'll be able to assess what's what. We pull up and Dan just points out this hurricane survived plywood box. So we were taken back a little bit. He said, oh, this is, I don't know, ancient. Tales of the Crypt old. And there's more dirt dauber nest than, I don't know, you could find it in a century old barn. And not only that, but there was a precautionary can of wasp spray. Just in case, you never know. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Last night here, we've been out there for a few hours. The sun was going down real fast. You know, I was looking down there and there's kind of some short grass and some tall grass and I thought I saw what was an antler come by in the tall grass and I kept staring at it and I never saw it again. But when I looked down through my, my glass, I, I could see that there was a buck standing there and I really quickly sized him up and aged him. As soon as Dan said it was okay, I sighted it in pretty quickly, made sure that I had a clean shot on him. Got him. Yeah. Couldn't have been more happy with the way things turned out, especially as the sun was going down, last chance, last opportunity, everything's kind of riding on that. It all worked out for the best. Let's have a look at him, man. That worked out a lot better than I thought. This this shot was a heck of a lot better, man. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I thought that shot was six inches back from where it was, but it worked out good. That was a heck of a job. Appreciate and, it. Yeah, man, thank you for shooting straight. <laughs> Straighter than I thought. He needed to go and he was there and Blake needed a deer and it just all kind of worked, worked out, you know, for the better. Back at the ranch, Dustin's son, Miles, and his classmates have a little surprise in store for the veterans. At school today, his whole class made y'all some cards. Oh, that's great. They did them all Thanks themselves. Thank you. The week has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, each one of the guys have an incredible story. Uh, it is absolutely our pleasure and our honor to be able to take these guys and at least give them a few days away from the realities of what's happened to them and what they've seen happen to their friends. I think we've made friends for life with them. They were enjoyable to be around. It just, it was a great week. And I can only hope that they had as good of a time hunting as I did taking them. These guys do the unthinkable for us and we don't even think of it. And those are the men and women of the armed services that have been wounded. You know. That's why we do it. You know, it's not about just taking an animal. It's about, you know, providing an experience to somebody that may not ever get to do that. And that's what it's all about, guys. That's why we're doing it. When we bring them on these hunts, you can sense that there's a true appreciation that they recognize that we're thanking them for their service. I would love to help every military person that I come in contact with. I'd love to do anything for them to make their day brighter, to make anything better for them because freedom is not free. 
it's not what people say, it's what they do that shows that they really care. And at Mellon Creek and Wildlifers, that's what you get. your wildlife or social media needs, make sure to follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.